Hi everyone! Today we're going to do my five top tips for painting peonies because it is very nearly peony season. So grab your paints and let's get started. Starting off painting a peony, the most important thing is to think about what brush you're going to use to create those petals. Now a brush this size seems rather intimidating and massive and unwielding, but it is really important that you choose a brush large enough to create those beautiful petal strokes in as few strokes as possible. So let me explain. If I've got, this is a sort of decent size brush, it's a size four. If I get some pink color here, and we start to sort of create our peony petals. Now, however, sort of I, if I can get this as wet as possible and squidge it down, I mean, that's a nice C curve, that's all good. But if I get one of my larger mop brushes out and get it really nice and wet and coated, just look at how lovely a shape that is. And of course, you can always mop up the excess liquid there should you need. And for a peony, it is all about those big, beautiful petals. So if you're trying to create a petal with lots and lots of brush strokes, chances are you are going to end up sort of overworking it and disturbing it and trying to create these really big petals and not really achieving much. Whereas if you've gone for something a little bit larger, then your peony will start to come to life a whole lot better. So what I would say is it's all about a bit of practice get yourself a larger mop brush. There's episode notes um, have the links to this brush in particular, as opposed to these ones. They're all the same brand. I love using Pro Art, um, and they're all rounded point. It's just a case that this one is massive. So yes, first top tip is get yourself used to working with a larger mop brush. There are so many petals in a peony. It's, it's like a sort of series of frilly pelly, petticoats, I think. Um, so it's really important to anchor your petals. So the first thing I would do is I like to, once I've drawn a stem, I always do a cross section curve that comes just a bit further down. I mean, you could continue your stem on a little bit, which is always helpful to know where your petals are going to start. And that just means when you do start to paint in your shapes, you've got a wonderful anchor point to start, and that just helps everything come back to one single point. So top tip number three is all about starting pale and building up your colour. So we're actually going to start painting a peony for real now. So I'm going to begin with a nice delicate bit of colour. And starting off pale just means that your brush is nice and wet and your colour is really transparent, but also you're not slopping colour on the page. So you don't want a really soaking wet brush. And so what we're going to do, as I was saying in the previous tip, we need to anchor our petals to the base. So I'm going to begin by delicately sort of creating little petal strokes by using the fine tip of my brush as well as the belly of it in a really, really pale, delicate color. And whether that means you start with the tip and draw it up like that, or if it's more a case of squishing it down and coming down like that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm sort of creating a, a rough kind of cup shape and I'm leaving the middle unpainted at this stage. 
and it can be a bit tricky you're like where on earth do I go where do what do I do but it's just a case of feeling your way remember that you're anchoring your petals they're coming from there and we're going to be building up layers and then also you always have the petals that are just flopping out from underneath And because I've started pale, it means that I can build up the colour really nicely and slowly. Continuing this step here, if I've started with a pale colour and now I can start to add some slightly more strong layers. But when I say strong, they're still really delicate. And it's not just a case of sort of doing layers over the top, it's also, and even with these large brushes, you can be quite delicate and sort of drop in something behind like that. all the time just keep thinking about how your petals are anchored to that central point might even bring some down in And then what I like to do is, because I'm working with very dilute colours, but they are, they're not like massively soaking wet. So now I can just do a little bit of smoothing, just a little bit. And we're really starting to get a, an amazingly full peony shape. My next tip is particularly helpful at this stage to stop you feel like it's bit, it's running away from you because the trouble with peonies I think is overwhelm. You've got all these colours, all these petals and it can look just a bit lost. So. The top tip is to not forget about the yellow in the middle. So in the middle here I have got just a slightly sort of unpainted space and what I'm going to do is start off with just a few dots and I'm still thinking about the centre of where my anchoring my petals is and then I'm going to take a thin brush just with water, I'm going to draw down the colour, but I'm going to stop where this layer of petals has been painted. So this is the beauty of it, these petals suddenly help form a sort of strong sense of where the front and the back is.
And this just seems like a really good point to be able to sort of take stock of where you are with your peony. And if it feels like it's just got too big or too unwieldy, getting a little bit of the yellow in. And then I like to just add a little bit of green gold if you've got a yellowy greeny color. Just some of the bits on the side. There you go, that just helps you remember where the centre is. My last tip is probably the most important one, is all about knowing when you're finished and keeping going as well. So quite often I say, oh, it's important to like walk away from a painting. But sometimes with a peony, you can sort of feel a bit like, ah, it's all looking a bit sort of pale and messy and not defined enough. And it's usually, after you've put in the yellow, it's usually a bit easier to then to see where you could possibly add something. And if you wanted at this point, maybe to use a smaller brush, then that's cool. So I've got a slightly darker color. I've got a sort of alizarin crimson. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to add a little bit more definition to some of my petals. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the sort of bottom curve of some of these ones at the front. This alizarin is really, really um, dilute. And I'm just sort of adding it a little bit at a time. So again, anchoring from the center. One petal at a time. And also if you feel, because I feel like I've got a bit more going on over there. So I am going to just sort of make this side feel like it comes out a bit lower. Always add in one or two in the back as well. If that feels right. So this has been yet another of my Patreon recommended tutorials. It's something that I've been asked to do quite a lot over time, but what's really nice with my Patreons is we have a sort of constant dialogue of what they like to learn. And um, that is probably the big difference between the Patreon uh, subscription service and YouTube is uh, it's much more of a dialogue between me and my Patreons rather than me on YouTube just sort of teaching you what I'd like to teach you. Um, so yeah, there we go. That is my five top tips on painting a peony. I have a peony project in my book, New Botanical Painting, where you learn how to paint it on an open face flower as well as a one sort of just from the side like this. Um, and we will for sure do a filmed tutorial of it soon and a full plant form but for now this is a really good starting point to just get you a little less afraid of how to tackle a peony flower. 
Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that helps when you tackle your peony painting soon. I want to say a big thank you to my Patreons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you're getting on. And if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!